it's time for your weekly breakdown on the latest in entertainment, sports, pop culture, and all things Milwaukee. This is Nothing But The Truth with Melanie Ricks. Now streaming on 1017 The Truth YouTube with the witty banter, latest trends on social media, and hottest celebrity topics, here is Melanie Ricks. Shout out to DJ Brother Z for the track. We really appreciate you, bro. And hello. Welcome, everybody, to Nothing But The Truth with Melanie Ricks. My name is Mel and Stu with Jason. How you doing, Jason? Come on now. Jason Smith with the people call me Double J. You know how it is. Double J? I'm just saying, man. (laughs) So it's giving Jason. It's giving Friday the 13th. It's giving Jason Smith. It's giving Double J. I'm here for it. You know what I'm saying? Well, the real reason why my name is Double J. Yeah, tell us. Is because my middle name starts with a J. Oh, okay. Hold on. Let me guess. Let me guess. Jason Justin Smith. Close. Close? What is it? One more guess. One more guess. Okay. What's close to Justin? Um, I don't know. It's, what is close to Justin? You know, I'm just going to guess. Jason... Jefferson Smith. <laughs> oh, he was close. Really? Because the first two letters was close. Oh, okay. It's a vowel. Jermaine. Jermaine. It probably would have taken me like seven more, but then I would have gotten to a point like Jermaine. Dep- Jermaine. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Jermaine. Jason Jermaine. You know what I'm saying? So, Because my name is Jason it. Smith. You know, that's good for the job application. Yes, it is. You know what I'm yes, saying? it is. <laughs> and then you throw the Jermaine in there. And it's know? like, oh, is that kind of Jason Smith? <laughs> but you know what's funny? I love That And I'm not, I don't want to like assume, but I can't help but to assume your parents probably knew what they were doing with that. You feel me? And there's nothing wrong with that. But what I love, honest, like for real, for real, just jumping right in. What I love about your generation, because Jason, he's a Gen Z. I'm a millennial, although I like to say I'm a millennial with a Gen Z moon. Um, But I like that your parents probably knew I want to set him up for success. And unfortunately, generations like mine and the ones prior genuinely felt like if you had a certain name you could only apply for certain jobs and i know something that was trendy this summer was black jobs which is so funny to me because i think every job is a black job um but i think every job is a anybody job hopefully and that's what your generation is about y'all don't really set the same like boundaries for yourselves that we did so even if your name was jermaine jason smith i think you'd still be in the same position today because y'all are that way i don't think gen zers are the type to like let people uh tell them what their what their construct is tell them like hey you can only fit in this box am i wrong Mel, come on you are 100 percent right boop, boop, boop. This is something that I battle with my family. Like before really? I even got this job, really, I can you can't have your ears pierced, you can't wear chains, you can't have. They your still hair talk like that. like that. That's still a thing. Yes, really. You feel what I'm saying? I so, do. I do. My main thing was no. I'm specifically gonna grow my hair out. Yeah. I'm specifically gonna get my ears Period. pierced because I w- I'm not about to be put into a box. You no. gotta set me for character matters more. Yes, I agree. But this is the thing. How far can that like mindset go? Let's say you're a Gen Z and you're being employed by somebody who's a, a Gen. What what are the other ones called? Gen X. There it is. Gen X. So my mom's a Gen X. She's very different from me. And I always uh, when I talk about my mom, I say my mom's a Gen X. She was raised by a silent generation, though, because her my grandmother, she's 90 and my mom is now uh, 50 something. And so when my mom was born, my grandmother, she was an older mom. But she came from a very different, like not even the baby boomer. She's from the silent generation. You know what I'm saying? And so for her, my mom, a lot of like what she bestowed on us was really old school because it's all she knew and so like with that though how do you feel as gen z or being employed by gen x's and some millennials and do you feel like there is that like give and take that you have to do and are you comfortable with i guess like speaking your mind of always respectfully but are you comfortable with walking into a room and being like hey this is what it is i'm not going to necessarily just go by what you tell me it should be i'm going to come here and make my way on my own and i'm gonna make my footprint be what i want it to be if that makes sense well you well you gotta toe the line obviously you can't come in here just too crazy true but i believe that if you are sticking to your beliefs and you stick into like what you feel is right right for example i don't think there's nothing wrong with me looking like this coming to work what's wrong um, with um especially in the setting with in which we're in wait hold on let's let's talk for real real quick is it your dread what are you talking about just the whole my hair the chains me wearing earrings and stuff like that like dude when i'm hmm. out 
bro, when I first started, I started working with WTMJ. Yeah. I tech, I didn't have my ears pierced yet. Okay. And I, I wanted to for my whole life, but my family was like, no, no, no. So I texted Mike beforehand, Mike Spawn, who was my boss at the time. Yeah, shout out to Mike. Hey, do you care if I get my ears pierced? Are you going to fire me if I get my ears pierced? Wow, but you were serious. I literally. And I when was that? Last year? This was a cup. This was my, like, three years ago. Wow. So my sophomore year. So that recently. Yes, very wow. recently. Because like I was a little nervous because yeah. I was fed all this stuff from the previous generation. Yeah, of course. So you do have to toe the line. However, I like coming in looking how I'm looking. Like for Facts. example, if I cover a Bucks game or something like yep, that, yep. I, people stop me all the time make, checking my uh, my credential to make sure I was supposed to be back here. Okay. But part of me loved that yeah. because of representation. Right. I like showing little kids who look just like me, yeah. bro. You matter much more than what these people are trying to tell you. One hundred percent. But like Jason, okay, I'm a. I want to really get into this because you work for a radio station, right? And you talked about your work with the Bucks as well. I feel like you work in these uh, mediums, if you will, where you can be more expressive. Do you think you could go and do a nine to five? Let's say that that's something you are interested in doing. Do you think you could go and do a nine to five, looking the way you do right now? For no, like for really, you don't. So you can't work for corporate looking like this. For so, and some places in corporate, yes. But for example, my one of my brothers, Jay, Jay Gent, yeah, yeah, he work at Barrett right now. Okay, Barrett is great, by the way. You know, like I wouldn't walk in. But Jason is very, or not Jason. I'm sorry, Jay is very like. I work for Barrett. Like I see that, so that's funny you say that. You see, yeah. He, 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 ever since he's been there, yeah. been acting a little. Yeah. You know what I'm if saying? we, if he lets us, will you have a picture pop up of him? Because I need people to know what he looks like, and then like a picture of you. That's so interesting. But you're very like. I think your personalities are similar. We're like y'all kick it, you know, you you bros, whatever. But then it's interesting that y'all go and do your nine to fives, and they're so different. Completely different. Wow. I could never imagine me walking into Barrett just right. like. However, though, mm-hmm. I will say I would still add my own swag to it. Like I would still add my own style. Of course. Because we, my generation, I, I'm probably millennials too, but we look at fashion. I mean, it's a statement. Like what we're doing, we're basically how we dress, that's how we feel inside. That's yeah. what we're trying to get. That's the impression we're trying to give off to the world today. Right. What year were you born? 2000. 2000. Oh, you're a Gen Z. Like Gen Z. Did you just say you were millennial? No, I said it's probably the same for millennial. Oh, okay. I was going to say, Jason. Okay. Because I was born in 91, but I feel like I'm a little bit of both. And you know why? Because, and I'm not even trying to be like, yeah, when I was young, I knew other, like, I knew. But, like, I swear to you, Jay, when I was a kid, I remember there were certain things that, like, my mom would tell me or, like, I would hear from, like, just, like, the news or, like, just see in society. And I remember as a kid being like, no, I don't want that. I don't want to do that. And the reason why I, I say that in a sense to relate to Gen Z is because my generation, Jason, we I, I genuinely feel like we're split half and half. Let me know in the comments if y'all agree. I feel like we're split between like yesteryear and looking into the future, you know, and, and I think that I, I actually I saw this meme. It said uh, post a picture of the type of person who voted McCain in 2008 and then voted Hillary in 2016 and is now backing Harris in 2024. And it's just funny, the the, the progression of going from John McCain, which rest in peace, he was a really, really great. He's great at his job and he was great at being uh, the, the, the Republican candidate. When you look back at those times, those debates, they were so nice. They were so like, how is your family? And now it's all like, you know, coming for your next. But anyway, even that shows such a huge difference in the way that like we operate and I feel like a lot of my generation is still stuck in the past but we're trying to migrate to the future but that being said I think that we literally walked so that y'all could like sprint I do but the other generations could say that about us but no offense Gen Xers I think y'all took us back just a little bit I can't explain it but I feel like Gen X just like really kind of like halted in time i don't know it's weird to say that but like millennials i think that we are the ones that kind of started like breaking away from the norm breaking away from what our parents told us and kind of being more like how y'all are i would argue as a whole i think as a whole y'all are so much more like forthcoming more like we are here we are here us roar like i love that whereas millennials it was like i'll, I'll roar if you're, you're yeah can we do it together we good yeah 
Y'all don't need somebody to do it with you. You're good doing it on your own. But do you feel like you've gotten anything from millennials? Like, do you feel like y'all learn anything? Because I feel like y'all make fun of us. Let's just call it spade a spade. I feel like y'all be like on some like millennial ish, like, oh, y'all use too many emojis and all this stuff. And I'm like, y'all wouldn't even know what emojis were if it wasn't for us, you know? Uh, and I'm just kidding. But like, I feel like there are things where y'all like think that we're like old heads sometimes. And but I'm like, I don't know. I feel like it's just we're creatures of our time. But like, how do you feel about millennials? And do you feel like there's like some sort of like orchestra we could all belong to together where we could just make this world a better place together? I definitely do believe that millennials walked so Gen Z can run. Thank you. However, uh -oh. I would say Gen Z been running. We we Shikari out there. On what? The I'm just I'm just saying. All of y'all's last names is Richardson. Okay. <laughs> Like, straight up. You know what and I'm saying? And good for y'all. I love it. This is what we're doing. So, but I would think that, like you said, other generations could say the same thing. Like, they they walked. But I do believe we can learn stuff from millennials. I believe that millennials, while we, Generation Z, we were, like, born and bred into the digital era, into social media right. and technology. Right. Millennials are the ones who basically bridge that gap like the right. millennials are the one who started it yeah and so we can hop in right so i would say yes y'all yeah. walk so we can run however i think gen z is the best generation and we go keep taking it to another level yeah okay let's talk about that so i actually both agree and disagree i think millennials are the best because we've seen i think that our generation is unique in um i don't know if we'll see it anytime in our lifetime at least where we have seen such a a, a shift in the world and the shift is like you know in, in the 90s it was rare to see somebody with a cell phone for example and you know we still had uh, internet dial up you know what i mean like we had those things that were precursors to what is the norm today and i know that like uh, Gen X probably has similar things like with uh, the television, you know what I mean? Like certain like really basic things that to us are basic, but you know what I'm saying? We had we had freaking Netflix back when Blockbuster used to make fun of it. You know, like we had like where you had to order DVDs and have them shipped in the mail and all of that to say we know what it's like to live in the Stone Age and we know what it's like to live and grow up with social media. Whereas Gen X, yeah, they know the Stone Age, but they didn't grow up with social media they grew up sure with like television they grew up with that kind of, and i'm not saying it's like you know whatever but my point is social media has arguably been the biggest oh what do i want to say it, it's been like the biggest uh, enforcer of change it, from from my perspective as far as like the change we've seen as a whole in society george floyd i do not think in any other time before 2020, we would have had all of those eyes, all of those lenses on that particular event. I know that COVID obviously was a big catalyst in that because the world was shut down. We're only watching what's going on on the Internet. You know what I'm saying? And so I understand that. But my point is social media did that. Somebody, your generation, recorded that, had the wherewithal. God bless her. She put it on social media and it changed the world. It literally did. And we, us millennials, we've seen that change. I remember getting a MySpace. I snuck and got it when I was 13. Back, Jason, I'm telling you, that was back when, like, for real, you didn't let your kids on the Internet. Because, like, you literally could be talking. And, like, you still could be talking to, like, a creep from around the world. But back then it was even more so because it was still so new, so fragile. So, like, we don't understand this. Like, my mom didn't understand what social media was. She was like, why would you be on a social media? What is that? You know? And so we've seen all of that, whereas y'all were born into it. But that being said, I've been hearing lately that there are certain things for as great as your generation. I love you guys. I genuinely do. I love Gen Z. I think y'all are great. I think that you're going to change the world more than any other prior generation has yet. See, Mel, most millennials don't be feeling like that. I know I they don't. That. They be hating. Why they be hating? I don't know. I kind of wish I was Gen Z. I love y'all. What? <laughs> but that being said, Jason, there are some things we got to talk about. And what's that? I heard that y'all don't be throwing parties. I didn't know that was a thing. It depends on how you define party. What? How do you define a party? It, so, if you consider, do you consider group of friends coming over to chill? <laughs> a you know party? What I'm Is that no, a party? No, that's group of friends coming over to chill. Like a kickback? Is a kickback a party? I mean, a kickback is a party. It's a, yeah, yeah. That's another word for party. But I think the <laughs> difference is like. I'm not, so for example, me and my friends, we don't invite plenty of people to come over and then like have music playing in the background and then we 
you know, people talking and like you got three people over here talking, five people over here talking. That's you know, not like normal. How a typical party is. Y'all don't do that. No, nah, if people come over, if people come to my crib, we finna sit on the couch, chill, You're right? Talk, hang out, right? Laugh. Right. That's it. So is that a party? I don't even know if that's a kickback, Jason. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know if that's a kickback, dog. I'm be honest. Okay. Okay, this is so funny to me. So, Jason, like, real talk, Jason came to my birthday party. And my birthday party, Jason, I'm almost embarrassed to tell you now, that's how all my casual parties be. Uh, yes. That was a party. I know, but that was casual. That was my, like, I'm just going to throw something together real quick. I'm I'm serious. It oh, was. That would, see, like, that would have been us going all out. Really? <laughs> Are you serious? Without question, are you kidding me? How nice it was and like the, bro, how it was. I feel like it was like a movie or a TV. You know, like when you're watching TV or a movie and you, they, they, it's a party scene. Or, yeah. That's what it felt like. It felt like a real le- legit on a rooftop. Are you kidding me right now? It felt like a legit party. That's funny. And I didn't know. I had no idea. Like, honestly, I did not know that y'all didn't throw parties until I saw, I think it was like a question or a, I sent it to you. But regardless, it was something going around on social media the other week. And it was like, uh, Gen Zers don't throw parties or something like that. But it was like a statement. It wasn't even like, okay, we need comments, questions, concerns. It was just like a fact. And I was like, wait, what? Because I've never thought about it. But what's funny is I have friends that are all different ages. And my youngest, because I have like a group of girlfriends. It's like 10 of us in a group chat. I'm not going to lie. I throw parties for my girlfriends all the time. We have wine nights and I'll have like mu- music bumping. We got the bottle set up. We got all like the different party accessory. Like it's a vibe. But I feel like that's normal. I have other girlfriends that do that all the time. My guy friends don't throw as many parties. But like, you know, we do every now and then. But my point is I have like... 22 23 year old friends that come through and they always always gave me the impression of like they don't go to parties but i thought they just didn't go to parties i didn't know y'all don't throw like jason i literally didn't know that so my question and you wouldn't know the answer but for y'all where did that change where did that shift come like is it literally with gen z because even when i was in high school jason and maybe it's because we had reality shows like laguna beach where they were throwing parties in high school maybe that's why but it was so normal to throw like i threw so many parties even as a kid my house is the party house maybe i'm just a hostess maybe that's what it is but why do you think y'all don't throw like traditional parties i would say Video games, technology. Oh. I think that's what kept us in. It, even though I'm not gonna lie, like when I was a kid, I was outside. Yeah, like I was so, outside. But you were playing time. though. That's not a party, right? Oh yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. But I, so what I'm. I think that it shifted because my generation got so used to being inside and got so used to um, oh. having communication, like I'm saying, through video games, I through see. like a Discord or just through technology. Yeah, but I, for you, you were literally outside, but the rest of your generation, not so much. See, I, I was outside. Like, me and yeah. my friends were outside, but right. a lot of my gen- especially the newer Gen Z's, because since I was 2000, I don't know when to start, but like I'm, I'm like 97, 98. So, so you're yeah, a few I'm years into much it. Early yeah, Gen Z. yeah. Like these late Gen Z. I know, I know. Different. My, I have a 14 year old sister. She don't be outside at all. I, I don't understand why. <laughs> at all. Dude, outside was amazing. Popping. We loved outside. I was outside even in high school. We would be running, playing tag. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, I wasn't out in high school yet. I wasn't, a, but that's the dif- difference in generation I know. because I know. we stopped going outside like that. Probably like eighth grade, middle school, and ninth grade, we will be outside, but not as much. Like yeah. I would go to my friend's house to play basketball. Outside, right, right. But we wasn't That's outside a little different. We right, right, right. Okay, so then let me let me try to break it down and just see if there's any partying happening here. So I, <laughs> you know, what I mean, so like, okay, for example, after high school dances, did you do parties? Oh, you did. Yeah, so like okay. we were like somebody they would rent like an Airbnb or something like that, and then like after prom we would oh, go like Airbnb. We'll go, that's the time we actually oh. did throw a party. So y'all got that kind of stuff. We didn't have that when I was in high school after prom. Our high school threw us an after party, and then we partied at somebody else's house after the after party. You know what I'm saying? So we had an after after party. You feel me? So y'all didn't have a, a post prom. They called it post prom. They threw us an after party. So like we partied at I don't remember where our prom was, but wherever prom was, and then they literally, if I'm not mistaken, either we transported ourselves or they transported us. We went to I think the high school. And you're at Brown Deer High School, and then they like it looked like a sleepover. They had like bouncy houses, and oh, I'm serious. This is a re- they didn't do that for you. Man, they didn't do that for us. Are you serious? They didn't do that for us. Brown Deer. What's going on, BD? What class were you? 
I was 2018. Oh my god, you guys. I was 09, Jason. Oh my god. My year times two is your year. That's crazy. <laughs> That's funny, but you're wise beyond your years, or maybe I'm just really immature. Um, but no, <laughs> but I just do think that's so interesting because I don't. No offense to y'all, that's probably my least favorite thing about y'all, and I've genuinely never really been like, oh, I don't like that about Gen Z because I love y'all, I really do. When I found out y'all didn't throw parties, it, I didn't. I wasn't mad. I was disappointed, Jason. I think that y'all need to bring parties back. I would love, and I know this may be uncomfortable for you, I'd love it if you threw a party for your friends. I really would. Because maybe you could be the one to bring parties back to Gen Z. Because if you post and your friends post, you may inspire other people. I'm just saying. I mean, I, you are right. Well, I, my freshman year at college, I'm not going to lie, though. I want to, you know. But those but parties are different. I say college parties are different. That's yeah, the thing. You know? Like, I'm out of college and I still throw parties for my. Like, I literally texted my girlfriends the other day. I said, we got to have a post or we have a, like a end of summer bash. I literally, I'm not kidding. I said that to my friends. That's dope, though. I, I ain't going to lie. I do wish that my generation did that more. Yeah. We just got to bring it back. That's all. Maybe you're right. Maybe I got to start it. I got to tell my friends, hey, come through. We're going to throw a party. They're going to be like, what's a party? And that's what I'm saying. They're going to be like, bro, what are you talking about? I'm not, what? I'm not interested in that. Okay, so do you think, though, that there are things that y'all are still or can still learn from us? Because that is something that I think millennials feel a little bit salty about with Gen Z. Y'all are so self-assured. To me, that's a great thing. I think it's a beautiful thing to be confident, not cocky, um, and to, you know, love yourself, but not to be too full of yourself. I think that y'all actually have a great balance with that, but I think that for my generation, that's something that they almost like, they can be a little bit envious of that y'all are so confident in who you are and what you do, and we didn't necessarily have that, like, I hate to say it, but Jason, I grew up in a time where even on like sitcoms, they still were making like anorexia jokes. You know what I mean? Like gay jokes, like stuff where like when you had like issues and then you see them making fun of the same issues you have on TV, it's embarrassing. And you you know what I mean? You lose confidence. Like, and my point in that is I don't think that we were necessarily given the same tools from an early age like y'all. Like we weren't prepared as much. Um and I think social media, again, has a lot to do with that. But that being said, do you think that your generation still is learning from millennials or do you feel not? And I ask that because I think a lot of millennials don't like Gen Z because y'all act like you don't need to learn anything from us. I, I, I do think we can still learn from millennials, especially somebody like me. I'm a lifelong learner. I, right. I feel like I can learn from Gen A, Gen right. Generation Alpha. OK, I but can. However, I love it. Like you were saying, the Shout out to the babies. Sometimes Gen Z's, us, sometimes we have irrational confidence. Oh. Sometimes we need to take a step back, and that's something we can learn from millennials. Right. Um, because I feel like millennials more so think more logically. They 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 plan and they have more rationale mm. for stuff. Whereas us we just want to go. We just, just gonna go, go all in and listen. What happened? Happened. Right, and that makes a lot of sense because I think Gen Z. There's a certain virality there. Like, I mean, the way that y'all post and y'all mountain dive and do all these cliffhanging things. Like, like not cliffhanger as in next week on General Hospital. I'm talking about literally hanging off cliffs. Like. Y'all do just go all in. It's kind of like a, you know, uh, think last kind of thing. Just do it, you know. But I don't I don't hate that about y'all. I love but I understand what you're saying where it's like, but sometimes you got to sit and think about like, what could what are the ramifications of my actions? What's going to happen if I <laughs> actually do this? Right, right. But that can be an issue, too, where it's like, do you care most about going viral? Because um there are too many tragic stories that you hear about people who are doing these daredevil stunts. And then something tragic happens from that. And I agree with you in that sense. Yeah, y'all should probably think a little bit more about it. But in the name of going viral, in the name of making money and just like feeling the need to have that be your footprint or your identity. How do you balance that, Jason? Because that is like, I don't even know what to compare it to for us. I don't even I have no idea what to compare it to because we didn't have anything like what y'all have. Look at uh, Charlie Diamello. I don't know if she's still super popular, but she's the chick who amassed the most number of TikTok followers during COVID and went like dummy viral. And she's a very she was a kid when that happened. Now she's a grown up. But my point in that that defined to me your generation because that defined like oh that's how they make money they can make money from being at home doing 10 second videos 
That's something we could have never fathomed. So that being said, how do you strike that balance, Jason? We're like, you're trying to keep up. Let's be honest. There's nothing wrong with that. You're trying to make your money, but y'all are also trying to go viral. And it seems like that's the most important thing for your generation. And I believe that's kind of a critique of us. And I agree with the critique. Okay. Because I think that because we were born into the social media era, yeah. we treat social media as if it's real life. Like, oh yes, my it's gosh, an alternate yes. universe. Yes. But we treat it as if this is real. It like is when not. somebody liking your picture, as if they really like, bro, this is so, this is a fake world. Yes. So I think that we are addicted with going viral. And it's a balance. Like something that I have to do, I got to take social media breaks. Yeah. Um, and a lot of times, when once I leave work, right. like, if I'm not posting for something else like work related right. or something I'm I'm not on social media. I'm right. not scroll. And even now, I barely scroll through social media. Like if I'm on social media, I'm going to post or I'm on for a specific reason. Right. I think that we are just too addicted to social media mm. and that's just from being born into this era. Right. No, that makes a lot of sense, but I think too y'all don't have anybody teaching you the way. Like I said to you, we walk so that y'all can run, but y'all are running so that they can sprint. You know what I'm saying? And it's true because you are designing this blueprint that no one even thought we needed, you know? And I think that that's a beautiful thing. But I think with every generation, there's going to be something that the other generation prior didn't have to deal with. And you're kind of the one that's figuring it out. You're the test dummy. And I feel like we were like the pre-test dummies. And now y'all are the actual. And then Gen Alpha, they're just going to get in the driver's seat and go. You know what I'm saying? That's why I feel like the next generation, I wonder where stuff going to go because I now know. we we went through the trial and error of millennial, right. Gen Z. We go, we going through the trial and error right now when the next generation is up. They know how this thing figured out. Right. It's crazy. It really is so crazy. Now, what do you think that we can learn from you guys? Honestly, hit me. I, I want to hear it. And it's okay if it comes off as a critique because on the behalf of the millennials, I'm ready to learn. I'm tweaking. I'm tweaking. I don't even have the mic on. <laughs> but, what, but I would say, one, to let loose a little bit. When I say let loose, I mean, because some millennials I know overthink. Like they, yes. they, 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 like it's just all over and they thinking like of every single oh my outcome, whether it's positive, yes. negative. And then sometimes that can lead to paralysis and that can lead to people not actually doing whatever they want to do. Not taking action. Because they overthought it. Yes. So I think what y'all can learn from us. Even though I said it's a critique for us that we go all in, sometimes you got to. You got to. Sometimes you got to just have that faith. Sometimes you got to just do it and yeah. not and sit and think about every failed outcome that could happen. Right. I like that. Dude, that's such a great point. And I love that, you know, one of arguably one of the, the biggest flaws, if you want to use that word, is also one of your biggest strengths as a generation. And there's something that we can definitely learn. But like in turn, y'all can learn from us to maybe like sit and think just for a second, not overthink, but just sit and think for a moment. But you're right. And again, Jason, like we come from a time when you couldn't talk about mental health. You couldn't talk about certain taboo topics that now you would be looked at crazy if you didn't talk about it. You feel me? But that like Jason, I cannot emphasize enough how new of an idea that still is. Like my high school classmates and I, when we do get together, because uh, I don't know about you, you're still fairly young. When I was your age, I still was kicking it with my high school classmates. I'm now far enough removed from high school that even though I still keep up and say hello, shout out to social media, because that's how I can do that. I don't I don't consistently hang out with any of my classmates. But when we do get together, it's so interesting because this is what the topic always ends up turning into, which is what we didn't have that y'all do. And I think that a big part of that is the the platform, the 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 opportunity to just sit and actually talk about your feelings. Say that you go to a therapist. If you were a kid when I was growing up and you had a therapist, there was something wrong with you. Kids didn't go to therapy. Like you went to therapy for trauma or because you're insane. You know what I mean? And for y'all, therapy is the norm. I think everyone should be in therapy. I think it's okay to have kids in therapy, not because they have issues, but because they have an outlet. They have someone to talk to their like to talk to someone about with their feelings. Like I think that for us, a lot of our conflicts are inner. 
And I think a lot of that is because we didn't feel like we had the space to be who we were and to talk about our feelings. It was very much shot down. It was very much just do what you're told. It was, you know, don't get in grown folks business, you know, but it was like that all the time. It was weird. Whereas with y'all, there's no hiding it. My 14 year old sister knows things that I mean, sure, sometimes I wish she didn't because it's giving you don't need to know that now. But at the same time, she's so much further ahead. My sister is an empath. And I think people are born empaths. But I think when you're a kid, at least when I was a kid, you only saw what was around you. Right. So if I was surrounded by a bunch of bullies, that's all I knew. Whereas y'all are exposed to so many different archetypes on the Internet. And that's a blessing. And my sister, she's such an empath. Like she will truly be like upset if she sees her friend in turmoil or whatever it may be. And sure, I was that way as well, but not in the same way, not in a I'm going to spring to action. I'm going to I know what I can do because I've seen this before. No, when I was a kid, it was just very much like mm -mm. if you're upset, keep that to yourself. You're fine. Do you feel, though, that your generation appreciates the openness of dialogue that y'all have in the the ability that you have to like really go and seek help, whether or not you feel like you need it in that moment. I, without question. Like I think That's that generation like Gen Z, we I think we're more empath or more empathetic I than agree. any other I think generation. so too. And I think it's because of one, like the times we were born into, all of the stuff we had to go through, like COVID. Like that's a very traumatic. That changed everybody. And with the social justice stuff, the fact that we're still doing this and was able to use social media I know to it. catapult it yeah. to another level right. um, is amazing. So I think that we are naturally empaths. I think that we're more curious than other generations. Definitely. We ask more questions. Yes. Um, like when I was a kid, I used to be scared to ask certain questions right. to like uh, my older family members. Yeah. Because like I knew I would get the same like response that yeah. they got. Yeah. You know, when they were my age. But I think we are different because we're asking more questions. We're more curious. And now we're looking that stuff up. Yeah. We research to go do it. So like when you say and I say that to say we're more curious from the standpoint of we're more empathetic because of that curiosity. Yeah. So if we see somebody down, we really trying to figure out why you down and then figure out a way to help that person more so than hey, get away, which I think is just generational. Totally. Do you, um, I don't even want to get into old heads speak too much, but do y'all listen to our music? Whatever our music is, I guess like early 2000s, 90s. Do you? I just, just started getting into 90s R&B. Really? Now, I, I'm an old soul, so I love yeah, Stevie are. Wonder and Michael Jackson. Those yeah. two are my I'll see you go favorite. way back. I think those two are the greatest of all time. Aww. And I love like the old stuff, yeah. Motown stuff. Yeah, you're a I, 70s, I, I 80s didn't really guy. Get into the 90s R&B. I'm just now really, really getting into it. Besides, like yeah, know, barbecues and stuff like right, that. right, right. But early 2000s rap, yeah, anything rap, yes, I like. Yes, thank you for saying 90s R&B and early 2000s rap because those are the two for me for sure. Like. Early so '90s R&B to me is some of the best R&B, but actually I think current R&B is really good. I do. You think it's better than '90s? I didn't say it was better. I didn't say it was better. I think it's really good though. Right now, it is. I think it is. I do. There, there are certain people where I feel like the conversation is R&B will never be what it was. Um, I think that y'all are redefining that. I do. I do. I do. I, I'm, I'm really into R&B these days. I think it's just different from the what we consider traditional. And that's where I said I don't want to get into old head speak because I think that's people feeling like if it's not that, it's not right. And it's like, don't say that because rhythm and blues, that's. It's so it's not one dimensional. You know what I mean? That could be so many different things. OK, so then, uh, early 2000s rap. You say you're starting to get into that like you were into it before. What? Like early 2000s rap. I really always been into. Rap. You have. OK, so, like, well, right, uh, yeah. because like Lil Wayne, like, right. I grew up really with the rap. It's really just the 90s R&B I wasn't tapped into. Right. But man, I go listen to the songs. And it's not even about the words or what they saying. Just the feeling that you get when you listen. It's just so smooth. Yes. You can listen to that. Relax. Chill. Yes. yes. I, I'm liking this 90s. R I got a whole. I had this girl send me a playlist. Got the whole playlist. I'm, I'm, I'm all good. But you had a girl send you a playlist? I did. I'm not going to lie. When you did. Is she your age? Yeah, she my age. <laughs> But that's all she listened to. That's not my girl or nothing. Oh. But that, that's, Does that, she know she's not your girl? No, no, she's not my girl. Okay. Like, but, <laughs> let's, let's get that straight. Does I'm she know saying. she's not your girl? She ain't my girl, but... You hey, know, she, she gonna find out. out today. No, she's playing. 
<laughs> no, no, no. But, but we, we're not she, exposing. She's looking me up, you know what I'm saying? So shout out her. You know that's how you used to tell people you were into them. You would make them a playlist. Or, excuse me, you would make them a CD. Like, you would make mixed CDs. Oh, my gosh, I'm dating myself. But you would literally make mixed CDs and you would write... Um, permanent marker on it like Mel's love mix XOXO oh yeah that's what we used to do so that's I why I was that. like oh somebody made you a playlist but y'all don't do that when you like somebody that's not a thing I, I did not know that was a thing I cannot lie to you um you may have just found out today that that's, that's a thing that's dope though like I'm not gonna lie like Isn't I, that cute? I think that's amazing I, I don't think we care enough to do that but I, that's a bad thing but i think if we care more we will be more um what's the word what's the like word for if you know you when you give your parent a christmas gift thoughtful we'll be it's, if we're more thoughtful for sure hey, it's okay hey you know what's funny though so i have dated somebody who was gen z and he never sent me any playlists. I think every single millennial I've dated, not necessarily playlists, but has sent me like songs. Like that's a normal thing for guys to do. At least guys used to do that. And But like that's still a thing for me today. Like if I'm like talking to or dating somebody, that's a very normal thing. Like the guy will like send me songs. Is that something that you would do for a woman? Oh, yeah. So okay. like, no, I don't exchange playlists before. Okay. I've never been the initiator. I ain't gonna lie. Like, okay. I've always she send it, and then like I, you know, kind of feel obligated to yeah. send it. But, but that's funny. But hey, at least you know, reciprocated. I, I send it at the end of the day. <laughs> that's funny. Well, Jason, I think that. I'm just letting you know, if you ever want to let a girl know how you feel about her, make her a playlist. You don't even have to put it into words. Just send her a playlist and she'll be like, ah. That's how I'm feeling, baby. You know what I'm saying? You feel me? I'm just saying, not me giving Jason free game. Thank you, Mel. Thank I got you. you. I got you. We're going to have to have a show where we just exchange. You tell me, you give me game. Not that I need it. Um, and then I'll give you game in exchange. Okay. So that being said, uh, we're going to get into, oh, <laughs> a debate. Um, whether or not millennials are the best generation group to ever exist. By the way, see, Jason, he's shaking his head emphatically right now. But this is the thing. This is an aggressive sentence. Um, I don't know if millennials are necessarily the best generation to ever exist. <laughs> but I do think that, like, when you put all the generations together and you think about all of the different, um, like, I guess... To put it simply, like the different inventions that have come and like just the different like eras of music and television and the progression that we've seen. I think that our generation has seen a lot. I don't want to say the most because silent generation, y'all saw some crazy ish. Y'all were the early 1900s. So you literally saw Hollywood be built. You know what I mean? Like it's different over there. But I'm just saying, I think with the change of tide that was social media and Apple and Microsoft and just the way that all of those things kind of came to be when millennials, because technically millennials, Jace, I don't know if you know this, because I'm 91, I think 90, or excuse me, 80, 81 is where the start of it was. And that's when Apple and Microsoft, et cetera, started coming to life. And so I think that we are part of that shift. I know that like Steve Jobs, rest in peace, and those who, um, you know, were the head honchos, if you will, of that like um, tech movement. I like, sorry, the tech movement guys, they were part of Gen X. I still think that we were catalysts in making that successful and making it pop and really making it become what it is. So that being said, I think that we're one of the best, if not the best generation to ever exist. But I would love to hear why you think Gen Z is. I wholeheartedly believe Gen Z is the best generation. Okay. And I'm not going to lie. I'm going off of a lot of potential. I'm going off of oh my god a, a, a lot of I have to because we you know we're not there yet we're fair not, fair you know what I, so I because I believe once we get to the appropriate ages yeah bro people like Elon yes I love like Elon Musk is very brilliant Jeff yeah. Bezos brilliant Mark Zuckerberg brilliant all these yeah. people are brilliant yeah but like millennials before us. I don't know what generation they are, but whatever they, they, they I think want. those are all millennials, right? That you named. I, I think that Zuckerberg. Yeah, is. for sure, Zuckerberg. Elon, but maybe, they, they but either way, so Probably we not. can run. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. So yes, they. Yes, Elon Musk going sending rockets out there. Yes, Jeff Bezos created an online marketplace. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Wait till we come up because now we have mm. that foundation. Now we have that standard. We know what. Can be done. Fair. So now, listen, with our irrational confidence, yeah. we're about to take it to another level. I hate, though, that 
because you make such a good point out of those three Jeff Bezos. I'm now thinking about their ages. Elon, I always think he's younger than what he is. You know what I'm saying? But shout out to you, whoever your doctor is. He's doing great work. Um, but Elon, I'm just kidding. I'm not kidding. And Jeff Bezos, you're right. They're from Gen X. And really, it's only Marky Mark who is from that. That's interesting, from that millennial. And that's, of course, just those three tech giants that you listed. Like, I know that there's so many more millennials that come out and have been amazing and enterprising. But that's a really good point because those are three huge figureheads still today. And so they are the ones that are kind of setting that foundation for y'all. And I think that y'all are going to take that foundation and just do things, honestly, that no one could even begin to imagine. You know, I completely agree with you, man. We on the same page with this one. I'm okay. all I'm all Gen Z. Now, respect to other generations. Right, of course. I, I respect other generations, but I just think, I'm not going to say we're the chosen generation. Oh, Lord. Because here come the, <laughs> but, I mean, something called the chosen generation. God said, you know what? I choose y'all. That's funny. That's really funny. I love it. Um, there's something that <laughs> Jason wanted to do, which is to. Oh, God. Yeah, 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 yeah. <sighs> I. OK, so when we do our show, God bless him. Jason does the, the best rundown. He gives so many details. But this last little thing on here, I just wasn't. I wasn't, you know what I mean? So uh, you want to tell the people what we're going to do? I'm a little bit nervous about this. I'm not going to lie. But we're going to be, it's going to be good. We're good. So basically what's going to happen is we're going to play a little game. This is going to, we're going to test, we're talking about Gen Z versus millennials. Right. So let's test Mel's knowledge on Gen Z and millennial slang. So okay. this is what's going to happen, Mel. Okay. This is what's going to happen. Okay. I am going to say a slang word or phrase. Yeah. You, first, you have to tell me what you think it means. Okay. <laughs> and then you have to tell me which generation Ooh. it comes from. Okay, bad. So it's two parts. Okay. All right? All right. All right. So the first word. Now, some of them going to be easy, but the hard part is going to be deciding which generation it Right, comes. right. Okay. Lit. What does lit mean, and what did lit generation, what generation did lit come from? Oh, gosh, you're starting off difficult. So lit, um, when you say that something is lit, it could actually mean so many different things. It could be rowdy. It could be popping. It could be excited. It could be juking. I feel like there's a lot of different synonyms, but it basically means that something is really fun and you're having a good time and you want to be there. That's the place to be. The reason why I say that's a tough one is because I think millennials are the ones that came up with that phrase. What's the answer, though? Okay, cool. How is it defined, by the way? You are absolutely correct. It is defined as exciting, okay. fun, okay. or excellent. Cool. Love that. Excellent. Example is the concert was lit. Now, <laughs> what generation did it come from? Millennials. Are you serious? I, I listen, I'm just going off of the internet. The internet put this under Gen Z. I bet a Gen category. Z made that list. No, I'm just kidding. No, and that's why I said it was tough because I'm like, I think it was us, but it probably was y'all. That makes sense. That that phrase is a fairly new phrase, even though it feels like it's been in our lexicon for a long time. It's pretty new, right? I feel like, man, I do feel like it was out before us, but I've been living in my whole life. So right, I mean, right. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> All right, so the second one. Okay. FOMO. Oh. What does FOMO mean and what generation did it come from? <laughs> this means fear of missing out. And I genu I know it came from millennials. Yeah. Yeah. And I actually, Jason, I feel like that's part of um why we throw parties. <laughs> I do. I don't think we like missing out on anything, okay? I didn't think about that. That's I'm dang, serious. That's dang near uh, exactly why. You know what I mean? And like, if you don't invite me, like, I have FOMO. So yeah, we definitely, we invented that for show. And y'all don't care about FOMO because y'all like, it's lit wherever I am. I don't care. I don't really care, but I ain't missing out on nothing. A party exactly. wherever I'm at. Exactly. <laughs> All right, Mel. So the third one, we got five of them. Okay. So this is three or five. Okay. Simp. Simp. Oh. Define simp. Oh, God. And which generation does it come from? Oh, Lord. Um, a simp, uh, it, well, first off, it technically comes from the duration simpleton. And a simp, uh, but in this t term, 
it's somebody who, um, when you say like you, uh, a man simps for a woman, a man will do anything for a woman. A man will change who he is for a woman. He's going to bow down to his woman. Typically, that's what I hear it in terms of. That's right. Okay, bet. Uh, I think it was Gen Z. Yeah, that's something y'all would come up with. And the only reason why I say that, because you don't make playlists for women. That's how I know. Because y'all think that that's some simp-ish. And believe it or not, it's definitely some simp stuff. I'm and I lie. get it, but we like us a simp. We don't want a simp that's like a wimp. You feel me? We want a simp that's a pimp. But not like a pimp hey, in the traditional a sense. You like that? Put that on a t-shirt. I will. But not a pimp in a traditional sense. More in like a, you know, flex kind of sense. But not like a you have a bunch of you-know-whats. Yeah, you no, feel me. I feel you. You now. feel I me. Feel you. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So now let's get on to the fourth one. Oh, okay. Hey, th I'm not gonna lie. This one gonna be tricky, but I'm gonna still say it. Okay. Stan. Stan. What does Stan oh. mean? And which generation did it come from? Okay. So I this came from the Eminem Stan song, uh, classic. We love that song and Stan. I think that Gen Z is actually the one that popularized it as it is because when that song came out, we were obsessed with the music video. We were obsessed with Ditto. We were obsessed with Eminem. We did not use that phrase stan or standing. That did not become a phrase until within the last for sure decade. I was not using that 10 plus years ago. I know I wasn't. So I do think that Gen Z came up with that. Am I wrong? Am I right? And all right. Isn't that funny, though? How is it that y'all were like, wait, why is this not a phrase? It's crazy to me. So I, for disclosure, growing up, Eminem was my favorite rapper. We I love him. Yes. Was the greatest rapper of all time. Yes. Um. So I, I've been knowing Stan, but no, it's crazy how my generation uses it. I don't know how we were the one to popularize it. That's been Isn't out that since like early 2000. Yes. Like if not, yeah, probably like 2000 yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I don't know how we popularize it, but no, yeah, everybody in my generation uses it. That's so funny. And it, it makes perfect sense. Like a Stan is a crazed fan. It's it's an upset and it makes so much sense. But in the music video, set, so like M was probably further thinking like y'all. M probably in his mind was like, yeah, you're a Stan and it rhymes with fan. Like, you know, but in our minds, we're like, oh, his name is Stanley. Like, we, you know what I'm saying? Like, we don't think about it like that because he said, yeah, sincerely, uh, sincerely yours is a Stan, your biggest fan. He did it for the bar, but y'all were like, no, a Stan is a crazy fan. And I love it. That yeah. word is in the dictionary. I know. Because of Eminem. I will say that's my favorite word that y'all have made popular. It is because it, it makes so much sense. And I love that it pays homage to Eminem and his prime and the millennial generation. You know what I'm saying? Like, I love that. But y'all were the ones that made it pop. Hey, listen, I mean, it's just Z, this is what we do. That's what you do. <laughs> so, last one, Mel. You ready? I'm ready. Cringe. Oh. What does cringe mean? And what generation did it come from? Oh, boy. That's actually a tough one because I feel like cringe, I thought it was a word before, but now that you say it, I guess I didn't really use it like that. But to cringe is like to to grimace, to feel like secondhand embarrassment, like, uh, like, like, ugh, like this is weird or like to like, I don't even know what other word to use, but this. That's a cringe. I guess that's the best way I can define it. Am I right? What's the definition? Yeah. What's the definition of cringe? <laughs> you did that perfectly. Did I'm not gonna lie. Your face <laughs> accurately <laughs> defined the word. The definition of cringe is something that causes embarrassment yes. or awkwardness. Yes, 100 percent And then Gen Z. Really? It was us. It was millennials. Go us. It was millennials. Go us. I love it. That's a great list. I can't believe it. So, Mel, I'm not you. You did absolutely phenomenal. Thank you. You only got two wrong. Period. And and it was like half wrong half of once. one. And you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. Technically you got one wrong if we combine the two mm -hmm. halves. So Period. I want to say congratulations. Thank you. I'd like to thank my uh, Gen Z siblings. Um, if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't have known the answer to any of those. No, that's great. I love it. I'm going to have to quiz you sometime on that. But knowing you, because you're Gen Z, you probably know them all. <laughs> I'm going to know all of them. Come on now. I love it. Okay, so I, I really do love the the generation battle of it all. I think that it's a it's definitely something we do at Bucks Games. It's something I see on TV. I think it was a show at some point. But regardless, I love the the battle of the generations. But genuinely, I think that we're better together.
I think that we are stronger as a unit. I think it takes a village. And what I love, genuinely love, about millennials and Gen Z, most of us realize that. Most of us realize there, yeah, there's no I in team. Sure, that's the standard phrase, but also it does take a village. Not one person can do it alone. And Jason, I don't think we were meant to do it alone. And I think that's what separates us two as a collective, millennials and Gen Z. I think that's what separates us from the prior generations. I don't know if it was that meeting of the minds as much. I don't know if it was that marriage of like, hey, we could learn some from y'all. I'll bet we could also learn some. Like, I don't think it was necessarily always that. I didn't live during those times. So based on what I've read and what I've seen, it doesn't seem, it seemed like it was more of a clash. And I'd like to think that we can work together, you know? I completely agree with you. I think that millennials and Gen Zs, we're the group that comes together the most. Yeah. I feel like other generations, they are not as, they don't want to mess with us. They don't they want don't to. They don't want to work with us. They're they good on their own. We don't know what we're talking about. Yeah. They think that we full of ourselves. We don't yeah. want to learn nothing. Yes. We don't want to do nothing. Yeah. So now we got to stick together to fight these old generations. We have to. Because I'd be looking at y'all like, go Gen Z. Go Gen Z. Like, I'm serious. I do. And I think it's important to be that way because y'all are the future. And the future is here. It's now. It's happening. The future is now. That's what these older generations need. And I ain't coming at the older generations. I love Love the older generations too, but y'all need to chill out and let us breathe and watch this magic happen. One hundred percent. Well, from one millennial to a Gen Zer, I want to say thank you for being who you are. We appreciate you genuinely. We do, and even if you don't always feel that, we appre- we really do uh, respect what y'all are doing, and I think y'all should just keep doing what you're doing and don't ever stop it. You know what I mean? Don't let anyone define you or tell you who you are. Because I think what's unique about your generation is you don't allow that. You're not afraid to. Not I, I don't want to say break the rules, but you're not you're not afraid to bend the rules a little bit or maybe even create your own new set of rules instead of following what's always been. You know, you're not afraid to do that. And I think that's great. You give me more confidence. Honestly, y'all make me feel like, yeah, we can do that. Why not? Let's do it. So thank you. I appreciate that. And I want to I want to extend a, 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 a sense of gratitude. To You're millennials, welcome. because welcome. like I said, y'all are the generation above us. So no matter what, the stuff that we're doing, y'all initiate it. All we doing okay. is basically finishing the coloring. Oh. Y'all, y'all, y'all sketched it out. Now we got the crayons and we just put right. it in. So we right. gotta thank the designers. That's you know? cute. I love that. And then Alpha Generation, y'all are gonna publish the book and it's just gonna be great. <laughs> Precisely. I, I love that analogy. I ain't gonna lie. That's probably the perfect analogy between millennials, Gen Z's, and Gen A. I think so too. I appreciate you. And I appreciate y'all so much. Let us know what y'all thought about this uh, battle of the generations, but it doesn't even have to be about a battle. It's just more of a conversation and more about understanding each generation strengths, learning from the past, and figuring out what we can do together to create a better future. It sounds really like, all right, have a great night, folks. Yeah, but like, it's the truth. It it really is. So really appreciate y'all. Jason, appreciate you as well, my guy. Hey, we'll see y'all next week. Thank you so much for tuning in. Again, let us know what you thought about this show. Let us know about any comments that you have. How do you feel about your generation? Is it the best generation and why? Let us know below. We'll see you next week. Have a good rest of your day and thank you for tuning in to nothing but the truth with melanie ricks bye